What's going on everybody, Triples in here. Welcome back to the Bourbon Ranch today. That's right, Maker's Mark BRT01 and the BRT02, they're upon us. Finally, each year, the Maker's Wood Finishing Series is just something my heart yearns for. Just like my ears yearned for the sweet sound of an A-10 Warthog. I'm always, always looking forward to the Wood Finishing Series. This year, it's even worse because we didn't know what the heck was going on. Well, guess what? We got them both. They released them both. We're going to review them both. So let's break this down really quick. The BRT-01 limited release. Good thing about Maker's Mark and their limited releases is they release a lot of them. It's not like some bull crap. You got to go stand in line and sell your soul. Now, I'm sorry if you still can't get one of these, but Maker's Mark stuff is a lot easier to get than other stuff okay tells you all the tasting notes stave details this is important because they are different the brt01 10 virgin toasted american oak staves on the back breaking this all down the brt01 tells a story of the first three years of extraction at the top of the warehouse so if you don't know Maker's Mark rotates all of their barrels. There is no little honey holes here, or this barrel just stays in this one spot. They cycle all of the barrels up and down the warehouse for pure consistency, okay? Every barrel, in theory, is the same. At least that's what they try to do. They don't let barrels go and do some weird stuff over here. So this is just a really cool way to show you what a Maker's Mark tastes like at the top of the Rick House. You know, they're diversifying their flavor profile without truly straying away from, you know, their core idea of just a consistent product. And then the BRT02, again, the stave profile is 10 virgin toasted French oak. So BRT02 is French oak, BRT01, American oak. You got to know that. Go in. It's a little detail that'll slip past you, and then you're like, what? What the heck? BRT02 is all about the final years of reaction at the bottom where it's cooler year round. So they tell you some different things to expect on the on the tasting notes. We'll get into that as we get into them individually. So pretty cool. They do the BRT01. They're getting, you know, barrels from the top of the warehouse where it's hotter. BRT02, we're down lower where it's cooler. Just they show you what those different climates can do to the whiskey so let's just get right into it before we do that hit that like button if you're not subscribed do it freaking weirdos brt01 my goodness i don't know about you guys i just i love these wood finishing series every one of them i've had has been absolutely fantastic on the nose <laughs> It's just pure joy. You know what I'm saying? Like, bang! That is pure toasted friggin' Christmas, you know? I hate giving tasting notes on certain bourbons, and then I find another bourbon that that tasting note applies more to. You know what I'm saying? This is such a toasted marshmallow, or just the toasting is... It, it comes out of this glass so hard. You know, on the back of the bottle, it says a hint of toastiness. That ain't no hint. That is toast. Almost like graham cracker or crust, like pie crust, but not dough or not a store-bought crust. This is like homemade crust, and you put it in the oven to where it gets a perfect crispiness. Not too much, not too little. It's just perfect. Just, mmm. All right, let's taste it. Well, I'll be gosh dang if this is not absolutely gosh dang delicious. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, without even telling you any sort of flavors I'm getting, I love this bottle. That might even be better than the FAE 01 definitely the two this is probably my favorite wood finishing series so far that's one sip that is so good you get 
the classic Maker's Mark stuff. It's like Maker's cask strength, you know? So, like, to me, super caramely. Like, just a caramel factory. Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory, this is freaking Trev Wilson in the caramel factory, okay? I'm no stranger to Oompa Loompas. And then, that toasted oak is like the perfect match, man. To me, I think them putting the American oak staves instead of the French oak really, like, that makes sense. And I don't know how it makes sense other than it made this taste delicious. That pie crust is back, okay? This is like a caramel apple pie where the crust, man, is just... I keep giving this crust analogy, but I hope you know what I'm talking about. When that crust is perfect, it's just starting to, you know, maybe a minute longer and it's gonna start to burn, that's when you pull it and it's just... That's where this is sitting. It's impeccable. Has some nice heat to it. It almost seems spicy. You know, like, Maker's is a weeder, it should be kind of soft, but I think the proof, I think some of that, the, the toasted oak, probably from sitting in the top of the Rick House too, it's just absorbing a lot more into that barrel. It just, just works. Okay, before I just fall in love with this bottle even more, let's try the two. <laughs> we got a second one, so let's pour this one. We'll see how different they are, and we'll see which one is my favorite. So they tell us it's coming from a cooler part of the Rick House, so fruit and chocolate. All right, let's find out. Yeah, it's way more chocolatey. It's like, it's turning into almost like a, a, a chocolate espresso or something. Little bit of coffee bean or something going on. Chocolate coffee. Okay, we're not, this ain't no black coffee. This is Starbucks chocolate espresso. So you're trying to beat, you're trying to like coffee, but you know, you're a phony, so you gotta throw in a bunch of sugar, like me. Also, something that stands out that is different from the first one, that uh, French oak definitely shines. Uh, it, I think French oak definitely is a very prevalent flavor. Um, if anything, this reminds me more of a Maker's 46, whereas that one, the BRT01, I was saying kind of reminded me of, of a Maker's cask strength. Now, I'm not saying that's what that tasted like. It just seemed like you took a Maker's cask and that's what this was, and this is like a Maker's 46, which in theory, that kind of is what it is. You know, Maker's Mark, fun fact, if you did not know this, everything's the same. Okay, they use, there's nothing different about any of them. Like I said, when they rotate the barrels, it's all about consistency. So a regular Maker's Mark and a Maker's Cast Strength is the same exact stuff, just proofed down. The Maker's 46 is the same stuff that goes through a separate process, the same process or similar process that these went through, okay? When they start doing these finishings, when they start putting oak staves down in the barrels, they take Maker's Cask Strength, or what we should just call Maker's Mark, they take a barrel of that, throw the staves down in there, and let them age. So that being said, that's why they have those characteristics, and that's why Maker's Mark, a lot of their stuff has that underlying DNA characteristic, because it is, it's like, the same thing, just we're altering it. Oh, that being said, let's taste the BRTO2. Much darker, chocolate, almost a dark chocolate, cocoa. That coffee bean is, is there. I think the coffee bean comes from the French oak. I kind of get that on a lot of French oak stuff. It's some sort of espresso, you know, coffee, Maker's Mark. Chocolate is like a huge note that I get on a lot of them. So the French oak, that's got to be where that coffee comes from. Also, it's, it's kind of like a Snickers bar to me, this one. It's like the nougat and the nut and the chocolate. It's, you know, like a dark chocolate Snickers bar. Do they even still make those? That's kind of what it reminds me of. I don't really get a whole lot of fruit. Um, maybe I'm just so hyper focused on the chocolate note because I love chocolate notes. Not getting a whole lot of fruit. 
I don't even know what fruit I'm supposed to be looking for. They they didn't give me a cheat sheet to give my review. I make up half the notes. They just say with some fruit. Okay, fruit. Let fruit. So my final thoughts on these two. Um, the winner for me, if I had to pick one, and we are not gonna do that because we don't have to, is the BRT01. I think this is this is it. Like this is probably gonna make my whiskey of the year list. This has gotta be on it. This is fantastic. This is freaking incredible. I just love that toasted quality about it. It's just, this is gonna be Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? Like everything that I drink lately is Thanksgiving. This one's gonna be at the Thanksgiving table too. That's just, this is top tier maker stuff right here. Like if you have to buy one and you're like me, if you're like, dude, what you taste is what I taste. For one, that'd be weird to get the BRT01. The BRT02, okay, while it was such a clear winner, the BRT01, I, I wouldn't say it's my issue. Why I knew it wasn't my winner. To me, this reminds me a lot of the FAE02, maybe even the SE4 PR5, it just kind of, I don't know, it wasn't different enough to me, it didn't stand out enough. You know, it's good, I like all of them, like all of the private selects I've liked, but to me, this is much more in line with, with, a, with a good private select, whereas the BRT01 is like, to me, something special. This one, it's good, I like it, I'm happy I got it, it's just not top tier, you know what I'm saying? If you're a Makers fan like me, like you still get this one with the other one, you know? So there we have it, guys. That's my review of the BRT-01 and the BRT-02. Let me know in the comment section what you think about these bottles. Which one is your favorite? If you don't have these bottles, let me know where you're at, where you can't find them. If you want cool glassware, you want to become a elite member of a top secret cool kid crew, go to the link in the description, join the Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month. We got barrel picks coming, exclusive barrel picks. No one else will get them. And until next time, guys, I'm Trev Wilson. I'll see you in the next video.